important that you know why you're doing it. And P.S., if you're doing it to big yourself up and make other people small, it's not going to go well for you. So <laughs> you want your intention to be uh, in some way to be uh, in service of the greater good because you can speak your truth and and position it in such a way that it's good for everybody. You just got to learn how to do that. That's on the smart money because then people listen to you. And uh, and the self-belief part is it's very different than confidence. You know, self-belief means that you know that you can step off that cliff and you're not going to die. That somehow the world will, will sort of... L- create ground for you as you walk off the cliff. And the key, the secret is just like in the old, you know, Wiley Coyote cartoons, when he goes off the side of the mountain, when does he fall? When he looks down. (laughs) So my advice is don't look Look down. down. Don't look down. You got to, when you step off that cliff, you take a risk, you make a change, you go after something that terrifies you, keep your eyes straight ahead take a step by step and and believe that the ground will reveal itself directly under your feet that's pretty but powerful. i'm telling you if you stop and start getting freaked out and look down you will see the drop but if you take a step the ground will meet you i promise you it will meet you it's magical like that that's what self belief is is all about um another telltale sign is that you only got one face you're the same with your girlfriends as you are with a boss, or you're the same when you're on stage, when you're off stage. It's got to be, there's only one version of you. Now, I'm not saying that we don't dial it up and down a little bit, because that's, mm-hmm. you know, we got to do that. Rain it in a little bit, let it out a little bit, but it is the same thing. It's just the intensity or the volume that might go up and down, but we know who we are and we don't have different personas that we're trotting out to please different people. There's a whole bunch of them. You can you can find them in the swagger assessment or in the book, but that'll give you a sense of, of how you can see how your swagger is doing. I love it. And what you said, don't look down. Don't look down. That's such good advice. That's such powerful words. I never thought of it like that before. Oh, yeah. Honestly, until you say it and then you say step by step, self-belief, you know, keep going forward. If you look down and then you're going to see it all. So just keep it's it's that that was one of the most powerful sentences. Oh, my word. Oh, good. I'm so glad. It's my gift. Gosh. It, it, thank you. Thank you for that. If you just tune in, Leslie M, her book Swagger, Unleash Everything You Are and Become Everything You Want, which is like we all want to become everything that we can. I think a lot of people... Um, the, the, you know, they want to protect their personal self and they're, they're afraid. And especially now the pandemic has brought both the office, the school, the homes, um, they, so many of us have been, it, it's been in a way, a, an awakening. Do you agree? Mm-hmm. And you say oh, that it's been yeah. an awakening. Um, t- let's talk about that for a minute. Well, I think that the, that the line between what we always imagined was professional and personal has gotten really, really blurry. We've had to allow people into our homes, into our living rooms, into our bedrooms, into our you know messy mm. backdrops, into our perfectly beautiful human imperfect lives. We've had to we've had to confess our mess. We've had we've had to accept other people's, and so our excuse me our tolerance. And I hate that word because it implies there's something that needs to be tolerated. But our tolerance for other people's realness has increased exponentially, and you can't put that genie back in the bottle. You know, if people have seen you messy with your kids running around, the dog is barking, the doorbell's ringing, you know, you didn't make your bed and it's in your backdrop, you're having a really rough day and you got to put your hand up and say, I got to tap out. I just need a mental health day. All of those things were not things we were allowing ourselves to bring to work before. And now we're going to have to be more integrated. That that line between professional and, and personal should be very blurry because if you're following this, this swagger, you know, truth, then you got one face anyway. So at least we've stopped kidding ourselves about the fact that we're all shiny and glossy and perfect because we ain't is just not real. And we all know it about ourselves, but somehow we believe that everybody else is magically more perfect, more glossy, more put together than we are. And it's a big freaking lie. And so when we move forward, it's going to be really interesting to see how we integrate with more empathy and more authenticity and more connection as Mm -hmm. a result of 
how much more we've seen of other people. And that's really what it's all about, you know, showing people who you really are. I agree. And, you know, we're, so we're on Zoom and it's like, okay, so we don't have the, the, the lighting and we don't have this. And we, and it's like people were able to see you're right, like that, right, the backgrounds. And um, it's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, I launched my podcast right before this pandemic happened. And I go, God, this is the greatest thing ever because now everyone's doing this and everyone's working from home and everyone's finding a new, a new jive. And I think everyone's realizing like we don't need to be perfect because we couldn't be perfect because we couldn't run to the hair salon. We couldn't run to get our, you know, our hair dyed. And people were, I mean, the reality of, of, of it was all like Tamron Hall was saying, and I, I hate to say it to talk about her again, but she was, it was so fresh in my mind. She was saying like, I started my TV show and then I was doing it from home. Um, mm -hmm. Rachel Ray, she was doing her, her show from home. People were learning a new way. They didn't need as much. Yep. Um, yep. Because we're now, we're now understanding that, that what's important is to show up as who we are and that people will love it. You know, we're so terrified that if we show people who we really are, they're not going to love it. But the fact is they love it more because they, they, they look at you and they go, oh my God, me too. Oh my God, we're the same. Oh my God, you're not fancier than me. You're not better than me. You're not slicker than me. It's like, nope, we are all a beautiful human mess and I am all for it, all for it. I love it too. I think so many good things came out of our big time out that we had. Maybe it was a little bit longer than we all wanted, mm -hmm. but I think we all needed to take a step back and to breathe and to smell the fresh air because the cars and the fumes and everything wasn't <laughs> happening. And, you know, we got to reshuffle and reorganize our houses. I think most of us were doing it and realizing what's really important in life. Um, so Leslie, you've traveled the globe working with executives, teams from top people like Google, I mean, I'm gonna, just going to list these and, and here you are, Google, Disney, Pepsi, TD Bank, Uber, and more, bringing your, I hate to say that this word cracks me out, badassery <laughs> to the boardroom. Tell us what that journey was like, because here you are in front of these, these major big companies. Um, how did that all start? I, I was an advertising creative director, and I found that I could not really help my people. I was so busy doing my job and putting out client fires and dealing with the politics. It was a very big global agency. And I watched my people suffer. They suffered with their confidence, their self-esteem, their, um, their ability to collaborate. All of these things were getting in their way and I couldn't help them. I tried to find training for them, but nobody seemed to really understand how to train advertising people because they're like the, you know, they're really smart and cynical people. And if you don't bring your A game and you don't understand their business, they will make mincemeat out of you. And I, I came home um, and said to my husband one day, you know, I feel like I'm using my superpowers for evil instead of good. And I really want to figure out how to help my people and people like these people. And he said, oh, okay. I said, so I, I decided I'm going to quit my job and start a training company. <laughs> Just and, like he, you. <laughs> and, he, and he fell off his chair. <laughs> he was like, what the, heck? what are you even talking about? He said, Leslie, you hate training and you're untrainable. I said, right. Perfect. <laughs> Who better to start a training company than someone like me? Because if I can create experiences for someone like me, then I might be onto something. Smart. And that's what I did. And, and this is, here's another message for everybody is use your transferable skills, understand what they are and take them. Because I had no accreditation. I had no experience at adult learning. I had nothing on paper other than the desire and the passion to help people. And so I used what I did have, which was, I was smart. I knew people. I had grown up uh, in a children's summer camp that my parents owned. Yeah. I had a lot of creativity from, from my previous roles. I had been a TV host. I'd been on stage. I took all of those things and started to craft experiences. Cut to 13 years later, and my company is now you know, award-winning, and, and we've traveled the world many, many times over. And, and what was an amazing thing is where we started out working with advertising people, we saw very quickly that that the message and the ethos of what we were doing w could apply anywhere. And mm -hmm. I discovered this crazy fundamental human truth as I was doing all of this stuff. It didn't matter the subject matter uh, of, of what we were training. It didn't matter the country, the culture, the company, or the level of individual. Underneath it all, the root of it, people did not feel like they were good enough as they were to succeed. 
They didn't believe that who they were was enough. Mm. And so, and this was the thing that was holding them all back. And when I started to realize this, I went, okay, this is a whole different thing. This is not about training people on skills. This is truly figuring out how to unleash who they really are and let them feel the power of that. And that's what triggered this whole swagger journey. That's that's what did it for me. I said, okay, this is it. I found my purpose and I'm going to focus on this. And that's what I did. Amazing. Isn't that amazing? Now, looking back, did you ever think all that and then your your amazing book and this journey and all the thousands and millions of people that you've helped find their swagger and unleash themselves? I mean, I'm still I'm still going back to your words. But don't look down. I think that is such a powerful Thing that you said there. And, well, I, and- I think that it's, you know, my, another thing that my mother taught me, which was uh, amazing. She used to say to me, say to us, whenever we had a dream to do something or to be something, she would look a square in the eye and she would say, why not you? Mm. You know, and, and if we, if we try to give her reasons, oh, she would break it down. She would like, say, look, Les, somebody's got to do that amazing, cool thing. What's stopping you? Why not you? And so whenever I've wanted to do something in this life, I ask myself the question, why not you? Mm -hmm. And I was so clear in the purpose of this. I really wanted to make every individual that I encountered, I wanted to make them feel happier, feel more powerful, um, suffer less from the imposter syndrome, if not be able to cure it for themselves. All of these these pains and fears and insecurities that hold us back and drag us down. I just wanted to help people to eradicate it. That was my dream. And when you're, when you're fueled by something that is so clear and so pure, that's like, that is the freaking jet pack. You know, I am so energized every single day because this is legacy work. You know, I'm at the latter part of my career. Let's not age myself right now, but you know, I'm not, I'm not 35 anymore. <laughs> and, and, uh, and this is what I consider to be my legacy work. And I, I, I want what I do to last so far beyond me. I want people to learn all about swagger and to teach it to their kids. I want them to bring it to their workplaces and change their culture. I want, I want them to model it and inspire it and support other people because a world filled with swagger is just a better, happier world for shizzle for shizzle. Oh my God. I agree. Just, um, I, I can just imagine you going on tour with this. I think every single kid, especially now with it being so difficult, you know, finding internships and jobs and these poor kids and the, the, the they, they've, they're resilient, thank God. And they bounced. I, I mean, I have two kids in college. Um, I think they both have their swagger, to be honest. But, um, and I think I gave that to them. I think when you have love and, and confidence and you're, you give that through your, your children in their lifetime, they, they thrive on that. Um, so I think that everybody should have this book. I think every kid sitting in a classroom should read your book. I think you should go to every single classroom all over <laughs> yes, the world. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, seriously, I think that like, what a difference it would make. And, you know, they always say there's that one teacher usually in your lifetime that made a difference. You could be a difference in like everybody's life if, you were, if there, there was only a hundred of you. Oh, God, right? you're going to make me cry. You're going to make me cry. That's, oh, no, that's I everything. It everything for me. That's all I want to do. That's all I want to do with all the years I have left. Oh my God. Well, I, well, how can we make this happen? You have to make this happen. (laughs) Well, listen, let's start with spreading the swagger word, you know, like let's just get it into as many hands as possible. And then I have, I have a, you know, I have a little master plan for how to take over the world. You know, it's, it's. Can I go with you on this journey? I want to go. Oh my God. Yes, girl. Come with me. There's, I mean. It's infectious. (laughs) There's nothing that, that, that we can't do. There's nothing we can't do to, to change the, like there's nothing we can't do to change the world. That's what, what I believe Completely. And, you know, people, I, 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 people say the most lovely, kind things to me about how I'm amazing or I'm so this or I'm so that. And I'm like, you know what? When I look at you, I see the exact same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all about, it's all about, you know, perspective and it's all about self belief. And I think that everybody has the power to spread this message. And I kind of don't care how it permeates as long as it does. And I, I have my little take over the world plan. I'm on it. 
I'm going to get on it. Let me tell you, if anyone could do it, you can do it. I can (laughs) feel it so much. If you just tuned in, Leslie.